Hello and welcome back to Knit3D. Last episode I showed you how to set up a reference within 3ds Max. In today's session we're going to start modelling and we'll show you a couple of techniques um, for creating this top half of the model. Um, there are different techniques which I'd use so I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. Um, so the first way is using box modelling. So if you haven't already guys, you should have a reference within your scene. Um, if you haven't then check the info card in the top right corner and you will find a tutorial for setting up your reference. And then you'll you'll have something which will look a little bit like this. You'll have your settings and all of that sort of stuff, very similar to mine. Alt W to enlarge your perspective viewport or alternatively you can press P, F for front or P for perspective. To begin with, we need a cylinder because this is a round table. Um, we want this to be 55.5 centimeters, uh, radius 2.4 centimeters high, two height segments, one cap segment, and 48 sides will do. Okay. Uh, we should have done this. There are a couple of things you can do. Um, so you can either right click, convert to editable poly. Anywhere in the in the window in the viewport, you can right click, convert, editable poly, or you can actually right click in your modifier stack and convert it to editable poly there. Or you could create a history of your modifiers by adding a modifier to your stack. That way, cylinder is still underneath it um, but I must warn you if you do change anything in under edit poly then it will break when you go back and change something in cylinder uh, so I'm just going to convert it to an editable poly I'm happy with the settings I've got so that will do so your reference um, if you if you haven't followed along to the last one and you already know how to create a reference then the length is 78.2 centimeters and the width is 113.8 centimeters. And basically, what we want to do is we want this table to be at the top. Right? We know this table is 2.4 centimeters. We know this reference is 78.2 centimeters. 78.2 minus 2.4 is 75.8 centimeters, and that's how high I need this table to be. So just press Alt W and just toggle into my front view and you can see that it's it's bushed up to the top right there. So once you've done that your tabletop is in the correct position and you can go into your selection mode and go into polygon selection. You can either do that by selecting it or pressing 4 and 4 will bring up polygons for you. Uh, select the bottom face or polygon and we are going to inset. Now we're not going to click on inset, we're going to hit the little settings box next to it. We're going to inset by 3 centimeters, I reckon. Okay, now this is so we have this bit here. Once we've done that, if we select one of them, you can hold shift and select the one next to it and we'll grab the whole loop going all the way around. We want to extrude this. Once you've selected the face at the bottom, you want to extrude it. You want to extrude it twice, so we're going to extrude by 4 centimeters. And if you hit this plus button here, this will repeat the last action, so it will repeat the extrusion. And we'll do it by 1.5 after. The reason why we've done this is if we go into our front view, it will come down to here and then we've got this here for instance. Something I've just noticed is my cylinder isn't in the centre of the world. So we just hit W and just go into move mode. We can see that it's half a centimetre off on the X and it's one centimetre off on the Y. And we can just set them to zero just to make sure that it's central. And you can see here that our cuts are the kind of represent what's going on here. So once you're at this point, you can go back into polygon mode by selecting in the selection, or you can press four. 
so that one of the lower polygons hold shift and select the whole loop going around once you've selected that we want to extrude which is just in your right panel and we just want to look at the settings we want to extrude by the settings the reason why is because it's actually just extruding in a direction right now whereas we don't want it to extrude in a direction we actually want it to do it locally what that will do is it will, it will do it via its local up so each face where where it's at its flattest is its up point so for instance this top face the z on this top face is its up so that's where it will extrude to and from now we don't want it by 50 centimeters do we that's a little bit too much so we'll do it by 0.8 something like that somewhere around around there um that's close enough i guess um, and we'll do the same with the top here we'll select that going all the way around and we'll extrude this by 1.5 centimeters if we just hit the tip box there we go we have half of the top nearly got the full top ready now so next we need to go into edge mode uh, edge selection mode if you double click one of these uh, this corner here it will select the whole loop going around alternatively you can click one of them and you can loop it you hit this loop button and that will do exactly the same thing as as i've just said so now we've we've got this we do want to chamfer for this this edge but we want to hit the settings box next to it and we want to chamfer by say 0.75 centimeters um three segments will do it like so there we have it that's the first way of creating our tabletop now the second way may seem a lot easier to do um, but it, it will probably use a lot more geometry so for the second way of doing it we're going to go into our front viewport um, F is the shortcut for it on your keyboard if you go into your create panel and go into shapes which is just next to geometry you want to be creating a line and what we're going to do is we're going to start this line from over here if you hold shift it will uh, it will snap it to the 90 degree and i'm holding shift down until here and then i'm clicking and dragging so i'm click drag holding to create this curve yeah and then i can sort of decide how I want this curve to be so I'm, I'm actually holding shift for the rest of this if I hold shift click shift click and again and again and again and then the final one in the center right click to stop editing it so straight away I've noticed that I've actually made this a little bit too tall so I'm just going to lower this just in selection mode so vertex selection I'm going to select these two top vertices if I press W I'm going to move and we'll just lower this down because they're slightly too high okay so we've created this line going around in the shape um, and it's it's resembling the outline of that we can go into our modifier list and we can find a little tool called lathe now something like this might happen and you're probably thinking what the hell's going on here well it turns out that the axis of it is in the wrong position um, so under lathe if you hit this arrow the axis will come up what you can do here is you can actually say zero zero and zero and what that will essentially do 
is it will create it for you. Now our previous one we made it so it was 48 segments going around and we could do the same for this one. In fact there's a hole in the center on both sides and that's just because the line didn't go directly to the center but it's alright because we're going to fix this anyway. Um, on top of your lathe you just go to edit poly just add an edit poly on top and then if you go into border mode uh, border selection mode so you can either select it there or press free to toggle it on and off I want to select this border here and we just want to collapse it and what I'll do is it will just merge it all into one and we'll do the same for the bottom as well we'll select that and we'll collapse it so it was two different ways on how to create a tabletop for a round table. Me personally, I prefer to do it using the line as it's a lot faster in my eyes. For me, a lot of people can find the curves to be a little bit dodgy. Um, they are a little bit, but I'm used to using them. Although this way is okay. There are a couple of things I'd do to it. So I'd go into polygon mode, I'd select this, I'd collapse that. So we've got a similar sort of thing going on here. And then there's something going on here. Um, and what I'd do is I'd literally just inset that by a random amount and then just collapse that as well. Just so we've got the same geometry going on underneath. And maybe even go into edge mode double click to select an edge loop and there are a couple of these edge loops which I don't think even need to be there if you hold control and hit backspace it will delete them as well as the vert vertices connected to it so thanks for watching guys that's how you create a tabletop uh, be sure to join us next time so we can go ahead and create the the plinth and we'll probably do the base as well during that episode as they are both very simple tasks if you got some valuable content from this video then go ahead and hit that like button hit that subscribe button i would appreciate it quite a lot but until next time goodbye